Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this demonstration of masking in Luminar Neo. Now this particular demo isn't so much a creative piece, it is more just simply taking you through each of Luminar Neo's masking features and how to apply them in your own creative way. Uh, stay tuned for future videos showing you how you can use these masks creatively, uh, but otherwise, here we go. So here we are in Luminar Neo. Now masking in Luminar Neo is a little bit different to other photo editing applications. Instead of sort of applying our mask first and then adding whatever adjustments we see fit, in Luminar Neo's case, the mask is under each adjustment. So for example, we would apply a mask for Enhance AI and we can apply a completely different mask to Structure AI. This gives us the precision to be able to produce bespoke masks for each adjustment that we create. Now this is a little bit complicated at first, but it is really quite simple once you get used to it. Now for the sake of demonstration, I am going to basically do a series of desaturations, not because it will make my image look good, but because it will illustrate what each of the masks do. So we're going to start with a linear gradient. And a linear, a linear gradient is basically kind of the digital equivalent of an ND grad. So what we can do is this will highlight the sky, it will sort of fade out here. And if we do our adjustment, what you can see is we can desaturate the sky while leaving the grass green as always, evergreen. So here we've got superb saturation and then desaturation. And we can also include, sort of boost the vibrance as well to sort of really send the message home. Now, if we go to the next mask, we have the radial gradient. Now, as the name suggests, this is going to be a circle. And the radial gradient is very good for drawing sort of your attention to a subject. And I often use them in portraits where I will sort of provide a sort of select edit on my subject while leaving the background sort of less processed. And it sort of creates a nice 3D pop. But in this case, we're just simply going to see a black and white circle. So here we have our background in colour and our little girl and the grass that she's walking on is in black and white. Alternatively, what if you wanted to sort of make everything else but this area black and white? Well, we can go back to masking. We can go to our radial gradient, draw our circle once again. And this time we're going to click invert. Now everything outside of the circle is now masked. And when we apply our adjustment, we're going to see that it's only the girl and the grass that she's walking on that remains uh, colour and everything else has been desaturated. So now we're going to get into some more of the Kletford stuff. We've got luminosity. Now what this does is it enables us to automatically select certain pixels of a certain lightness. So in this case we have our nice bright sky and a dark sort of grassy foreground. And if we sort of move here we can see everything is masked. And as we sort of remove the dark tones from selection you can see the mask is sort of regressing. And eventually it goes completely. Now in this case what I'm going to do is just mask the brightest pixels in the photo, which in this case is the sky. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. You can also work the other way, so we can sort of select mid-tones, for example. But in this case, this photo is nice and easy. We've got strong contrast between the grass and the sky. And here we go, we are now masked. We can go back to our adjustment and apply our desaturation. Likewise, we could do the grass. So we can just remove the highlights and simply select the darkest tones in the image, go back to our adjustment and desaturate. So now we're going to get into some of the more sort of flash stuff. So Luminar Neo was one of the first photo editing to sort of offer object recognition powered masking in Mask AI. And Mask AI, what it does is it evaluates your image and sort of lists what it thinks is in your photo. So in this case, we have human, 
we have sky and we have natural ground. So if we click on natural ground, we should get the grass masked. Grass masked. Likewise, we can hit sky. And now we're masking the sky and the natural ground. Or we could just deselect natural ground and just match the sky. We've also got human here. However, clicking on human doesn't seem to sort of mask my subject. And this is sort of a typical story with mask AI and other object recognition powered masking systems is that they tend to be not entirely reliable. Sometimes they're very good, sometimes they're not, uh, but always unpredictable. So we can go back to mask AI, we can select our subject. So let's go for natural ground. Once again, return to our judgment and apply our effect in this case, as always, our desaturation. That leaves us with object select. Now, object select seems to sort of leverage the mask AI sort of technology, uh, but it works a bit different in that we sort of just click on the things we want to keep. So let's uh, click on the sky. We want to mask the sky. Say we want to mask the grass, we click. We can also subtract our selection, so we can sort of click on the sky to remove our selection, and also sort of click on the grass to remove that. We can click on the girl, and it does seem to sort of be more specific than Mask AI. So for example, here I'm just clicking on the shirt, and it's doing the shirt, we can click on the legs, the dress, the hands, the hair, the shoe, and overall, we've got quite a nice mask. We go back to our adjustments, and then, as always, we can desaturate or saturate our subject. Now, as you can see with some of these effects, some of these automated masking features, is that they sort of lack precision, as in some of the edges might not be quite masked. Now, how critical that this is varies from photo to photo, and of course, how closely you're going to be looking. But if you need absolute precision, the best way, as always, is simply to brush your mask on. Now, here we can just got a big fat brush, and this would be a completely reasonable thing to do if we wanted to mask the sky. But we don't want to mask the sky. We're going to try and sort of uh, mask this girl. So we're going to go to paint. We're going to decrease the size of our brush. And now that enables us to sort of very carefully sort of paint over the outline of our subject and I'll speed this up for sort of viewing sake and once again we can go back to our adjustment and desaturate and apply our effect in this case desaturation desaturation. Now you might notice that some of the edges are a little bit rough. That's just simply because I'm making a quick job of this. Um, if I was doing it for real, I would be zooming in. I would be changing my brush sizes and doing it properly, but you really don't want to watch that. So as you've seen, we can increase the size of our brush. We can also agree the sort of softness. Now what this is, is it's the transition between the brushed area and the non-brushed area. So we can see here, let's exaggerate. So here we've got two circles. The middle brush will be fully masked while the edge will sort of slowly and lightly sort of fade transition between my masked area and my non-masked area. Now we do have extra settings. So if we go to show here, mask actions, so it's sort of a collapsible menu, we can go to show and that will sort of reveal to us the mask. So rather than just when we grab our brush over here, we can see our mask subject at all time. We've got the ability to invert our mask. So let's say that we want to apply our adjustment to everything except the girl. We could mask the girl and then just click invert. And now our mask is everything else. We have the ability to clear the mask, and we also have the ability to fill the entire screen or copy the mask, and that is what we're going to do. We're going to copy the mask. So here we are. Let's do our sort of desaturation, just for sake of it. And now we have applied our first sort of mask, 
and our first mask specific adjustment. Now, what if we want to do a little bit more with this? So let's say we want to sort of uh, create additional structure for this content. Well, again, we go to structure and we do have the option to apply a new mask. We can sort of apply a linear grad, we can do a mask AI, we can do an object select eye. But what if we want to basically reapply the exact mask that I just sort of ham-fistedly drawed on before? Well, you noted that I clicked on copy. So now I can go to paste. And what that's going to do is it's going to replicate the mask that I drawed earlier. And now I'm free to go to adjustments and then apply my structure. Now I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see that, it's just not that clear on here. But what we're doing is we're gonna get sort of a sharper image, a sharper girl. So here we are, we'll remove the structure, a bit soft, and we'll boost it up. And then we're getting more definition. And as you can see, the rest of the scene remains unchanged because we're only applying it to the masked area. Now, if you would like to learn more about Luminar Neo, drop by my website at Silent Peak. There you will find links to free trials, a promo code to make your purchase a little bit cheaper and all the information you could possibly need. So that's it, that is masking in Luminar Neo. I do hope you found that useful. Uh, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of thing. And if there's any requests, please leave a comment below. My name is Richard from Silent Peak. I wish you a good day, bye-bye.